and welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have exciting guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. I have read. Jeff, Giuliani, thank you so much for doing the show, man. I tell you, what a pleasure to have you both. Thanks for having us. Having us. You're so welcome. Well, folks, uh, Emmy-winning executive producer David E. Kelly, I mean, you know, just never disappoints. Oscar-winning director Barry Livingston, uh, you know, Livingston. Is that just, just, you know, when you talk about these investigating series, the calling, I tell you guys, you're, you're going to be in for a treat. I have two of the stars, Jeff, uh, Will Bush, also Juliana Canfield is with us. And Jeff, I'll start with you because I know, man, you, you play the detective, uh, I think it's Abraham, I think they may call you Avery for short, but talk about your role and how your deep sense of spirituality and kind of principles kind of got your character going there. Yeah, Avi, Avram, Avram. Uh, what, a, what a true honor to play such a character. Um, it's very complex. Um, Avram's calling is is being a detective, is uh, solving cases. This, that is his purpose in life. He's fully dedicated to that. He's, fully, he's emotionally fully immersed in those cases. Um, and he leads with empathy. He always, always tries at least to see the human being first, not the suspect. Right not the criminal um yeah that makes him so so unique and i i i i, I didn't see something like that on tv before right <laughs> well i tell you it, it is very uh i mean it keeps you glued to the set and then uh, uh juliana you play his partner i believe it's janine harris on the show and just being that intense being his partner because i know you 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 walked in and said look i want to partner with Avery, what is that like? What was that like being your your playing your role? I loved it. Um, Janine is new to the squad. She's a young, idealistic detective, and I think she sees in Avi a way to maintain her sense of idealism while also becoming an excellent detective herself. Um, and I think their relationship starts out as a on Avi's part, begrudging teacher-student relationship, but over time, over the course of the series, I think the you 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 spend time with them as partners, and you see them become true partners. And Janine, even though she's young and new, has a lot to offer Avi as well, and they're able to teach each other about the other and about the world, um, which is really satisfying to play and to find that arc and it was delightful to do it with Jeff who's as wonderful a, a wonderful scene partner and not at all reluctant nothing like Avi <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, Jeff I, I'm I was really intrigued by uh just your um interaction with I I, I don't want to give much away there was a scene where you're talking and you're questioning uh uh one of the persons that, you know, he's got this costume on, but his hands are bleeding. You just, mm -hmm. you're, you're getting into, talk about that superpower, almost like connection that gravitates you to, to the people that you're investigating. Yeah, I think the superpower is simple yet so rare. Um, it's truly to listen to people, to really lis listen and to, and like I said, to see the person first, to see the human being first, with mm. with infinite respect and and really be in, with full attention. Um, and I think also the purpose is not I got you, you know, to get you. It's really to to heal. I know what you mm -hmm. did, but now what we can do about that to heal, to be forthcoming. Wow. Wow. will be better for your children for yourself for your soul and i think this is something um something very uh 
very unique and I can and and a very beautiful message. You you're not you ain't kidding, but because you guys solve some of the most what they call inhumane crimes, <laughs> right, Giuliani? You, I mean, you like you said, you you're young, but you 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 into it. You've gotten into it now. You've overcome some stuff. Yeah, um, and I think over the course of the season, Janine, she she has overcome things, but she also has she has to con she has a confrontation with the reality of the world i think over the course of the season right you know she comes in thinking mm -hmm. that life is like an episode of law and order and the bad guy is going to go to jail and the good guy is going to be happy and the case will be simple and it will close and i think over the course of the season she learns or is reminded again and again that good and bad are often woven very closely together and intentions are often muddied and there is no clear cut answer and Avi helps her to navigate that but it, it's a tough lesson for her I think definitely well I gotta tell you guys I, it kept me to glue to I can't wait everybody gotta know that the calling streams all eight episodes beginning Thursday November the 10th on Peacock and uh, I tell you what, what you guys are just within your own self, Jeff. Uh, I remember you from Breathe, and uh, also you know uh, stuff you've done in on orthodox, unorthodox stuff, and a uh, little drama girl. But just, just what you guys are doing, and and um, I will say to you, Giuliani, uh, good good twenty two sack not there for you for outstanding performance and what your career have done. I remember you from the Ohio oh, They Lost Man. So guys, come much success to you. Succession. And again, make sure guys you you tune in. And appreciate you guys doing the show today. Much, much pleasure having you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. so much. Thank you so much. All right, you're so welcome, my brother. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. Hey there. Chaske Hugo, thank you guys for doing the show today. Pleasure to have you. Oh, thank you. No problem. Well, I tell you, man, the, the, first of all, the movie is just it's just wonderful uh, drama. I tell you guys, Prime Video is doing their thing. I have two of the stars of the English. I have Chaske Spencer, Hugo Blick. Well, I start with you, uh, Chaske. Just talk about your role, man. This is this is a, a powerful uh, show here. Oh, thank you. Yeah, um, Eli's character, he's an ex Pawnee scout from the Calvary, and he's on his way home to uh, reclaim some of his land from the Homestead Act, which, you know, that's, he thinks he's going to get it. And on along the way, he runs into Cornelia and um, assists her on her adventure of revenge. And during that, they develop a relationship, very loving, tender relationship. And uh, they go on these adventure to help her go kill the guy who killed her son. And I tell you, you know, just talking about the drama and the expense behind it, uh, Hugo, man, I tell you, in your role, man. <laughs> well, my role was to uh, start it off with looking at uh, all the pictures from the mid 20th century in the genre. So some call it work, and I just called it play, particularly uh, those of Anthony Mann. I love the pictures of Anthony Mann, George Stevens, and then moving on, of course, with Eastward, Outboard, Jersey, Wales. And then I had to find something for the English to say that felt now. So it talks about the genre, it's related to the genre, but hopefully it's speaking about something that's now. And I think what is now about it is the relationship that's struck between Chaske's character and uh, Emily Blunt's character. So for as much as it's a revenge Western with all the bells and whistles in place for that, there's a sort of intimacy at its center a developing relationship that's uh, a love story, in fact. Well, anybody that loves, I tell you, you gotta know, you guys gotta know, I love westerns, but to put it on this level, I mean, just the, I mean, the casting, the the, the outfits, the the whole nine. Uh, but Chesky, talk, but you when you talk about just just just, I guess, trying to create this uh, historic, you know, love story behind, you know, some you know extraordinary things happening. Is, is this uh, is this role different than anything you've done before? 
Oh, completely different. It's 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 the lead role, the male lead role in this, and uh, uh, the, the 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 story itself, the character is a, is you know a Western hero that could easily been played by Newman or East Eastwood, and to go into that uh, to play this character, you know, I held it with very respectful and uh, a lot of gratitude because I knew that uh, the weight of that. Um, was quite was quite uh, as a good motivation for for any actor to sort of to, to nail the role. <laughs> he never showed it. <laughs> so cool. I, I tell you, you know, I, I go into any dive bar with this guy. No one's going to trouble. <laughs> he, he, oh, he that's too funny. The weight, but he didn't show the weight, uh, and that's what, what it was all. Well, I got to tell you, you know, uh, Hugo, from the just the writing of this man, and then to capture uh, this eighteen ninety kind of mid American kind of, you know, the landscape. I mean, just everything about this movie. But when you think in terms of the intensity, though, the terrifying obstacles to overcome, though. Yeah, well, that's the point, really. That's the nature of the genre. You know, they're kind of opera spaces in a way. They're very elevated. This isn't a document in social realism. It's an exploration of of the Western genre. And, and so the obstacles have got to be steep and the results are usually bloody. And that's the nature of the genre. That's the nature of the Western. But I, I guess I keep going back to the idea that as those obstacles get knocked out of the way, in whichever way Chasquet's brilliant character does it, in the middle of it all is this developing relationship. So there's a tenderness to it as well. And I guess that's what's unusual about the exercise in the genre. Well, I just wish I had so much time to talk to you guys. I, uh, but I know, uh, Hugh, you, you've been this multi-award-winning writer and director and producer for a while, so I know people are going to capture that on screen. And then, no, no, I mean, Chasky, Spencer, from what you're doing, your role, man, and what you've starred in and bringing to the table, much success. I want to let everybody know, though, the English, uh, uh, the limited series premieres, I believe, Friday, November the 11th on Prime Video. And, uh, uh, guys, thanks so much for doing the show. And uh, I'm telling you, I, I'm just so excited to, to see what it's going to do. Oh, thank you. Pleasure to join you. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. Be back in a moment. Hi, Everett. Hi. Hi. Aurora, Olivia, Sophia, what a, what a pleasure to have you sisters. Thank, thank you. you. Well, I got to tell you, I'm loving the, what I've seen so far on the show. Well, I got to tell you, folks, everybody, I got the Cobol sisters here with us. I have, again, uh, Aurora, Olivia, and Sophia. And, uh, uh, Olivia, I'll start with you because I know that you are, you know, kind of well-known for the Miss uh, Universe title. You know, of course, uh, you're in the fashion entrepreneurship. But I know also you ultimately want to have a family. And just talk about your role uh, uh, on the show. My world on the show? It's, well, it's definitely a sister family vibe like that's definitely the undertone of of the show you see a lot of family dynamics um you see what i'm going through at the beginning of the series and then kind of what what aurora is going through sheds light on in respect to what i'm going through <laughs> no she's offense. like trying not to give anything away <laughs> i'm like, trying huh. not to give anything Very away <laughs> well it's yeah i'm a guinea yeah. pig just in life and in the show or is born. a guinea pig it's like you always just watch what she does and then you're like okay i'm not doing that mm -hmm. <laughs> that could work <laughs> literally now, now aurora now aurora i know you're the oldest sister that you 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 quite kind of say what's on your mind, huh? <laughs> I, I, yeah, I wish I could filter a little more. It makes doing these sort of things difficult for me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. She's, She's the one we worry pinches, about. They put her next to me so she can pinch me when I say something that's going to get me canceled. Yes. <laughs> Correct. But you know what I love? I know what I love about you guys is that you have this built-in best friend type of close-knit relationship with sisters. And then, um, you know, I think about, you know, just how much that bond is with all. You know, Sophia, talk about... I know that uh, you're the youngest, and um, you know how have, have that been with your older sisters just being there to help you kind of navigate life. Ha being the youngest has like you know pros and cons as anything does. I get to look up to my sisters and see the mistakes they made first, and then not do those. But at the same time, being younger, sometimes you have to fight to be heard a little bit more, and there it's definitely a added level of level of pressure when you have older siblings, let alone when they're like 
super successful in like a supermodel, that can add a lot to, to the Which plate. Which one were you talking about? <laughs> because <laughs> I'm sitting right here. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that was, that was for me something that was harder for me to navigate when I was younger. I've definitely grown a lot, but that's a part of the show. That's just my life and what I've been going through. So you'll see just the real raw moments of being a younger sibling. You, you know, I was looking too, I was looking to you guys also at the family dynamic. I love, you know, seeing your, your mom and dad kind of interact with you guys. They seem to be like wanting to be involved, especially your dad wanting to be involved. But talk about your, there. there's no shortage of laughter and tears and things that are going on. And I come back to you, um, uh, Olivia, uh, because we know I know sometimes, you know, we have this picture in life, what we thought it should be, and, and when it doesn't go that way, what is that like? Yeah, I mean, it is so different. I mean, in respect to my parents, they're just, they're so humble, they're so genuine, they're, they're really special people. I feel like everybody gravitates toward them so far in the press and in the, um, just in seeing little previews yep. and snippets of the, of the show because they're so lovable and they really are, like they're great. They're gonna get their own spinoff. They will. So, they they're will. a competition. <laughs> yeah, they honestly. Really they are. They're just funny and fun. Grounded and grounded and not that. love them. Yeah. That's right, that's right, I see that. Now, uh, I know um, th there's a, a live, uh, I mean, Aurora, you, you, you have, you know, there's some things that you're going through that I know, uh, Sometimes, though, we think we, we know our relationships and ultimately we find out it may not be what we thought, right? Absolutely. And that's one of the things that I was, I feel lucky to share that part um, as hard as it was at the time to go through, but um, I know I'm not the only person to ever right, go through right. something like that. So it's, it's kind of the gift to be able to share it and to show that it really doesn't have to be tragic. And, you know, I do get a lot of support from my family, so I'm hoping that people can you know, feel that support and maybe simultaneously feel supported through watching the show. Now, what is it like, uh, I guess, uh, um, you know, Sophia, when you think in terms of trying to plan your, your parents, I know you, you, you're the one that you right, kind of stay away from confrontation, but what is it like being a part of planning your, your parents' 35th anniversary? That was pretty hilarious because we actually got the year wrong. Uh, it's 30, 36 <laughs> years of marriage. They politely <laughs> overlooked that upon the surprise. Yeah, but like, huh. it was fun because, like we said, our Just parents are yearly. so humble. They don't do anything to really celebrate themselves ever. So we decided that it was time for them to finally, like, have a party for themselves, celebrate. And Olivia's huge on planning celebrations. She loves to do it. So it's honestly more more fun for her than anyone I would have to maybe more than my parents yeah actually. she even yeah. made herself the star entertainment that was interesting she was, she was conveniently the music for the night she herself whipped out the show yeah. I was. I'm starting to think maybe this well, wasn't about were you guys gonna hire a band I don't think so you know what's funny I saw I saw a little episode there and Libby I had to laugh I think you and mom were trying to play uh, your violin there and you you <laughs> You, you were you weren't doing so well. Yeah, my mom was like, like to mom. Um, "You're rushing. I can, I'll never be good enough for her." I our, know. Our mom is like a very talented. Don't make her cry. Musician. We have four more interviews. So she's <laughs> Olivia's worst critic. Well, there you go. I, well, we gotta let everybody know the Popo Sisters premieres Monday, uh, which is today, 9 p.m. Guys on TLC. And I tell you, I've just enjoyed this interview. Uh, talk with Aurora, Olivia, and Sophia. Uh, Copo and guys, thank you so much and much success to you. It's a pleasure. Thank, thank you so you. much. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. Be back in a moment. Hi. Hi, Everett. Anisha Vishal, thanks so much for doing the show. What a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having us. Well, listen, uh, Vishal, I got to start with you, man. You know, I have 10 years of dating, three engagements. You know, what you, you keeping it waiting for, man? What's the what's the problem? No. It's I I, it's, it's, it's not me. I'm, I'm so happy. I, I'm ready to take on the husband title. It's been a long time coming. At least that three years, ten, three broken engagements and 10 years later. <laughs> Well, I got to tell you, Nisha, after going through so many, I guess, ups and downs of dating, finally you found Mr. Right. What does it feel like? 
it feels amazing, but you're, you're going to see, you know, the challenges that come with that as well when you have so much going on in your life and managing relationships and the business and friends. It's a lot. Well, you know, I know you both uh, have, have careers, and I, I know, Rashola, uh, the things that you're doing, but you're putting your, your, your work in, and I know because you're thriving, you know, to, you know, as a, I guess, vice president of one of the big commercial companies, the group's there, but talk about trying to juggle that and, and family. Yeah, so work-life balance, that's the big key, right? Uh, it's, yeah. it's hard to find that perfect balance when it comes to work, relationships, and friendships, and uh, because of that, there is a lot of drama that ensues. <laughs> now, uh, Anisha, you, you're, um, I saw, read something that your newfound love has kind of put a strain on kind of like friendships. Uh, you know, that happens at times, right? Yeah, especially when, you know, you've been the single one in the group, and I think everyone's used to just like having you there, and then, you know, you make priorities and time for someone else. Yeah, I tell you, you know, you're talking about just, the, you know, the market, what the fashion industry doing, your success there. But uh, I, I do know um, <clears throat> anytime, though, when you wait, though, sometimes I feel, I guess you guys can both answer this. Is Has the wait been worth it? And i start with you, Michelle. Oh, yeah, uh -huh. yeah abso absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's about damn time. I've been ready. I've been waiting. And, you know, uh, we've gone through so many trials and tribulations, but we are here. We're ready. We're going to have a big fat Indian wedding. We're so excited to share that with everybody. Um, and I don't think an Indian wedding has ever been shown on national TV and you're not going to have one. You're going to have two big fat Indian weddings and both on such large grand scales. And, and then Anisha, talk, I, I'll, get, I'll leave you this with this to say, because I know I, I've seen some of the trailers and man, I tell you, it is a beautiful location, but talk about the, your culture within itself and how you party. Yeah. You know, as, Vishal said you're going to get two weddings so you're going to get twice the drama twice the culture twice the fun but within that you're going to see you know beautiful Indian clothes you know beautiful Indian decorations our amazing traditions and rituals oh, yeah. and I think the viewers in for a treat and I tell you you're going to celebrate new beginnings right on both of you the new love interest is going to be up but I'm telling you folks Bravo has done it this time. Family Karma is the name of the series. Uh, I believe it premieres November the 6th, 9 p.m. on Bravo. Any last minute things you both want to say? And I start with you, Anisha. Uh, tune in on November 6th. Uh, you will be invited to Vishal's wedding. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm telling you, you don't want to miss it. It's going to be fabulous. Everyone here is, you're going to see all our seven stories <laughs> with Kate Negro. What a pleasure, again, to have Anisha and Vishal, uh, Bravo's family, Karma. Again, guys, make sure you watch it. Uh, premieres November 6, 9 p.m. Bravo is where you want to be. Thanks a lot, guys. Appreciate you. Thank you. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hey, Everett, how you doing? Grundy, what a pleasure to have you, man. Yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. I got to tell you, uh, guys, uh, EarthX TV kind of shows us how to love the world that we live in. And with the new series, House of What, and I have the host, Chris Grundy, and I know uh, <clears throat> he loves to be referred to as Grundy. But I got to tell you, Grundy, when looking at some of this stuff, man, you got to tell me about this series because some strange, some quirky, some unique <laughs> Some different projects are happening, man. Tell me about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this series is about um, <laughs> about unique homes uh, that are uh, being sustainable, uh, environmentally sustainable, and uh, it's also about the people who build these homes and and um, renovate these homes. They are unique people who love what they do. They're unapologetic about it. Um, uh, you can see some weird, <laughs> weird stuff on this show. Now, Grundy, talk about what what has been probably one of the most unusual materials though used in one of these houses. Well, I tell you what, it, it's it's going to sound like an uh, unusual material, but it's used in an unusual way, and it's really a thing called rammed earth. Um, they take a lot of dirt from the when they dig out a house, they put some uh, a little bit of concrete in it and make forms. Now, this this dirt cannot burn; uh, it is fireproof. 
it is it it maintains the heat from the outside and from the inside of the house you barely have to use any heat inside it is um it's one of those things that can really change how we're uh how we're heating our our lives but it's not very unusual it's been happening for thousands and thousands of years I tell you, Grundy, looking at some of the episodes, the one that got me, man, was that plane, man. That plane probably got me. But what what was one of your favorite episodes after meeting folks and their, their unique ways, inspiring us in different ways? What has been one of your favorite episodes? Uh, I, it's hard to say because they're all so wonderful. All the people are so great. But one of my favorites, uh, there's a woman who bought an airplane, also an airplane house, but she actually bought a 747 and took the wings off of the airplane and used them as the roof of her house. And she bought both wings, obviously. Hmm. Um, and one of the wings, she has a house <laughs> at the bottom of the hill. And she calls it the guest wing. And, uh, and it's on 55 <laughs> acres in Malibu. It is one of my favorite, favorite parts. Well, Glenn, I got to tell you, man, you know, considering all of the things that are happening, man, why is this show, what do you think is making it so appealing to viewers? Because, man, it is catching on. Audiences are loving, you know, what what you're showing. And as a host, I know you got to love it as well. Yeah, I really do. And I think one of the things that appeals to the audience is, you know how many, so many times you're driving down the street, you see this really cool house, and really all you can see is the front of it, you know, and that's that's all you can really see. So we, as, as a house of what, we take you inside that house, take you inside the thoughts of that house and how, why it's what the way that it is. And so that voyeurism that we all have, especially around Christmas time, I wonder what's going on inside there. Now we're going to take you. Well, I got to tell you, folks that are not glued by, they, they got to tune in to seeing, you know, Joe's airplane man house. I mean, it's incredible. You got to talk about Chad who built a ranch house and, Using some traditional type of Chinese methods, man. Wasn't that wasn't that incredible? Yeah, it was incredible. This Minka house was built uh, in Japan like 350 years ago, and the bones of the house were still intact. So they moved to Belgium, and then this guy in Texas in Austin, he said, "You know what? I love that house. Had it shipped from Belgium. Had Japanese builders come flying in from Japan to build it the traditional way, putting sake on the beams and everything. It is." Awesome. And it's made out of hempcrete. It's, it's made out of hempcrete. So as the air comes in from the outside, it's filtered through. Now, I know what you're thinking, that hempcrete, but it's not the THC, THC stuff. It's not that. Okay. Man, I tell you, but uh, Grundy, everybody's excited about the show. Where, where, when does Thanks. it air, man? Let's talk about that. It airs uh, 930 on Thursday nights, Eastern Time. Uh, it's on EarthX TV, which is on Spectrum, and uh, yeah, you can see it anytime. I, 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 I love the show. I, I watch it with my mother. Man, I've been in television a while, and I, you know, I've been a part of a lot of the markets. Man, talk a little more just to touch on Earth uh, X TV, man. I, I, this must be kind of new to me. Yeah, EarthX TV uh, is another passion project, but it's, I mean, it's a huge business, but it, it's a network that wants to highlight how people can live with the environment and in a sustainable environment through their homes, through their lifestyle, uh, through their friendships, through through all kinds of different avenues. And EarthX TV is a great way to, to find out how you can live with the environment and help each other. It's a, it's a really a great network. It's new. It's out of Dallas, Texas. And um, yeah, it's really, really exploding. And I knew you were, you know, you, you knew more about it and wanted to touch on that. Well, guys, I tell you, Grundy, it's been a pleasure having you. House of What airs Thursdays, 930 Eastern Standard Time on Earth X TV. Grundy, what a privilege to have you, man. And thanks so much. I'm excited about what the show is doing, man. Uh, my pleasure. I, I'm excited to meet you too, man. Thank you for everything. <laughs> Happening to me